Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. Imagine earning half a million dollars a year, but feeling like you still have nothing left at the end of every month to show for it. Sounds impossible, right? Well, today I came across the story of someone who's in exactly that situation. He's 40 years old, earning $500,000 annually, and has absolutely no idea how to get off what he calls the hamster wheel of paycheck to paycheck living. Let's dig into this and figure out what's going on or what's going wrong and see why someone who's in the top 1% of earners is stuck in a financial trap like this. James is a corporate lawyer in Chicago. Last year, he bought a $4 million home, locking in a mortgage rate of just over 6%. He drives a luxury car and recently paid $150,000 to join a country club. On top of that, he frequently spends on golf, fine dining, and vacations. So once he gets to the end of the month, he feels like there's little or nothing left to put towards savings and investments. So even though he's earning $500,000 a year, he still feels like he's living paycheck to paycheck. And he's wondering how he can stop this paycheck to paycheck living and start building wealth. I think the glaring issue here is the $4 million home. Standard advice is to keep your housing costs around 25% of your gross income. If James had applied this rule to his budget, he would have a lot more breathing room. It is worth keeping in mind that when experts talk about this 25% ratio of housing to your income, they are talking about gross income or income before taxes and deductions are taken out. However, if you wanted a more conservative approach, you could take this 25% figure and apply it to your take home pay. That would allow you to have even more room in your budget to prioritize other goals. Maybe that's savings goals or simply doing anything beyond living in your home. Without too many specific details, the article tells us that James bought a $4 million home, putting 20% down and locked in an interest rate just north of 6%. James's $22,000 monthly mortgage adds up to over $267,000 in housing expenses a year. That is a huge chunk of his income, which is the core issue. James's $500,000 income puts him in the top 1% of all income earners, but no income is high enough to ignore basic financial rules. After taxes, James's take-home pay might be around $27,000 a month. Still a great income, but not when most of it is tied up in housing. When looking at these numbers, I can only assume that a portion of his income is not being taxed as traditional W-2 income, because if taxes are truly bringing his income down to around $27,000 a month, there's no way he can be paying $22,000 a month in housing costs. The numbers just don't add up. Even if we were to take taxes entirely off the table, which I understand we can't do, but hypothetically, a $500,000 income completely ignoring taxes would give you about $42,000 a month to work with. Even at that point, a $22,000 mortgage payment would be taking up nearly 53% of his budget. There's no way around it. This house does not fit into his budget. James should consider selling the house and downsizing to a home that's around maybe 1.6 million, cutting his housing costs by more than half. That would bring his monthly payment to around $11,000 a month, and that would put his housing costs at about 25% of his gross income. And while Chicago is a major metro area in the US, the wonderful thing about it is that it is one of the more affordable metro areas in the US, especially if you compare it to something like New York City or San Francisco, because you can find a 1.5 or $1.6 million home that is absolutely stunning in this city. Just look at a few of these photos that are presently listed on Zillow right now. James is clearly caught in the lifestyle inflation trap. Expensive home, luxury car, country club, and vacations. There's nothing wrong with enjoying these things, but even with a $500,000 income, you still need some guardrails in place. And the luxury spending really wouldn't be an issue if he kept his housing costs in check. But if you stack it all together, an expensive home, an expensive car, and vacations, that's a recipe for financial stress, no matter what the income level. Sure, we could nitpick the budget, maybe ask him to take a few less vacations, maybe that would even save him ten or even $20,000 on his lifestyle, but I really don't think that that's going to move the needle all that much. Maybe we could even ask him to drive a more conservative vehicle. There is a broad range when it comes to a luxury vehicle. It might go all the way up to $100,000 or even more. 
But I also don't think that this is the person that we can ask to drive a Toyota Corolla. Don't get me wrong, I love a Toyota Corolla. I just don't think this is the person who wants to drive that vehicle. Like I said, the biggest problem is his home. I think if he fixes his home, he can fix all of his problems because right now the home is taking up an impossibly large percentage of his income. And I say this strictly based on the numbers you see when you type in this type of home and that interest rate into a mortgage calculator. The numbers just don't add up. So if he'd be willing to slash his housing expenses and slash them dramatically, I really think that would fix the vast majority of his money problems. That would give him a lot of breathing room in his budget. After that, it just simply comes down to automation and making sure that you're automatically contributing to your investments and treating that like a non-negotiable expense because it is essential to be contributing to your investments if you want to get out of that cycle of paycheck to paycheck living. If you ever want to reach financial freedom, this is a must do. And this is a great example of how you can truly outspend at any income level. Then once James is automatically contributing to his savings and investments every single month, he's free to spend the rest of his income as he sees fit. He could live as lavish of a lifestyle as he wants, so long as he's checking the box on savings and investments. But right now, it sounds like he's kind of doing the reverse of that. He's spending as much as he wants throughout the month, then waiting till the end of the month to see how much is left for savings and investments, only to find that there is nothing left. I do think this article brings up an important question that I've often asked myself. Do you think you ever reach a level of income where traditional budgeting rules don't apply? I often wonder if there's a level of income where traditional budgeting rules don't apply. I would love to know your thoughts on this one, so if you have an opinion, leave it in the comments down below. I will definitely read them. I don't know if I can say a hard yes on this one, but I do feel like the higher your income goes, the less rigid the traditional frameworks of a budget are. For instance, take something like the 50-30-20 budget, where 50% of your income is dedicated to your needs, 30% to your wants, and 20% towards savings. At higher incomes, expenses don't have to increase proportionally, which makes traditional budgeting less rigid. Now they certainly could, as we saw in James's case, they absolutely did. But I don't think if you're earning something like $500,000 a year that your needs or your essentials have to take up 50% of your budget. I would argue that you could live a very wonderful lifestyle and live in a very nice home and drive a very nice car and have those expenses be less than 50%. It really comes down to what kind of lifestyle you want to live. I would also argue that it's far easier to save 20% or more of your income at a higher income level. Sure, it still takes a certain level of discipline to set aside a portion of your income every single month to investments, but it should be easier to do as your income increases. It should be easier to increase how much you're saving and investing. I also think you're given more grace to inflate your lifestyle more on a higher income, with the caveat being that you still need to keep your essential expenses in check. If you find that your housing expenses are taking up a smaller percentage of your income and your auto expenses are taking up a lesser percentage of your income, why not expand your wants category? Why not take an extra vacation or buy something simply because you want it? Why not enjoy the income you've worked so hard for? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like I said, I think these frameworks become a little bit less rigid when you make more money. However, as this scenario perfectly demonstrates, I don't think there comes a point where you can completely throw out these guardrails because even on a high income, you could still find yourself living paycheck to paycheck. And it seems kind of silly to increase your income so much and work so hard for this income and spend every last bit of it because at that point, you have nothing left to show for it. So what's the point? So maybe some semblance of a budget always has to exist, but maybe the budgeting style changes as income increases. Maybe it's not necessary that you're hitting certain categories with the percentages spot on. Maybe as your income increases, you switch more to goal-based budgeting where you prioritize certain goals. In James's case, he's expressed an interest in stopping living paycheck to paycheck, so he needs to prioritize savings and investments. There's loads of budgeting styles out there, but the one thing they all have in common is that they all have you living within your means. Choose the one that works for you and stick to it. So if someone making $500,000 can easily fall into this trap, 
Do you think there's an income where traditional budgeting rules don't apply? I really wanna know your thoughts on this one, so leave a comment down below. I post new videos every single week. If you got anything at all out of this one, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, or if you know of someone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I'll see you soon, bye.